Right, so this video is about the hub motor for my new e-bike and there's going to be an e-bike build series, this being the first video about the motor. Now this is a Muxus 3K V3 hub motor which is a 3000 watt but it can handle up to about 13 kilowatts without getting too too hot so yeah this thing will have a, a heat sink called a hub sink which is basically a bent heat sink and that's going to go on there I'm going to need to get this motor laced into a rim I'm going to go with a 19 inch motorcycle rim but that will be another video I've got my disc brake rotor on here now these motors are actually bloody complicated for these discs to put on because you get me you get a caliper. Um, sorry about the mess, there's a lot of other stuff in here at the moment. But anyway. Um, right, so the caliper, which is this bit, won't fit on the disc with enough clearance between the side of the caliper and the thing, the motor. Usually, anyway. So what you need to do is buy some spacers, which are those little aluminium bits down there, and some extra long disc brake belts. But these are actually too long, so I had to put some extra washes on there, but that, that's on there now and that works. I'll just get rid of this caliper and brake thing again. Um, anyway, this motor is, uh, as you can, uh, most of you have done e-bike builds can probably tell, it's not, these aren't the original phase wires that were on here. The original ones are, no, not them ones. Um, really need to clean some stuff up in here at some point. There we go. This is the original phase wire, which is equivalent to a 14 gauge, and this is a 4 square millimeter. It doesn't look like 4 square mil, it looks more like 2 square mil, but the diameter focus, diameter of the internal wire is probably a 14, it's just the insulation is very, very thin, which I don't like because. This motor is going to be running at 110 volts and thin insulation plus high voltage. I don't like that. <clears throat> but yeah, this is what we've got on here now. Focus. There we go. That's 10 gauge, which is um, about 6 square millimetres. Something like that. And this has got very, very thick insulation. It's also silicon insulation, so it's high temperature. And this is what I had left over. I bought five metres of the stuff, and that's all I had left over. This is about two metres, so I used three metres in the build. One metre for um, each one of these. And for connectors, I've got XT150s, which can handle 150 amps continuous, and a maximum of 250 amps, which is quite a bit. And for the hall wires, this motor normally has two sets of hall sensors, but I didn't want two of these massive things on it, so two of these massive connectors and the motor's rolling away, great. Um, I have to put some loads of heat shrink over to protect the wires, and this is an aut automotive waterproof six pin connector. And another thing was getting all these wires in here, let me have a look down there is very very tight and there's not much clearance in between the outer rotating bit and the wire as you can see there it's only about maybe one two millimeters and they can't touch this outer bit otherwise they'll get sliced up and my entire bike will become live which is um not what you want but anyway this is pretty much all there is to go on about the motor i've got a little single speed three wheel on there which is uh, not a particularly good one but not the worst and the problem with this is what I didn't realize because I'm an absolute idiot is that single speed three wheels this is a three wheel off of a BMX 
will not fit a regular nine speed chain because the teeth are too wide. So this is now useless until I buy another freewheel that fits this nine speed or another chain, which is not gonna work so it won't fit my crank set. So that's useless. Just, um, that's a second. I'm just gonna put my box of bike parts back up there. Yeah, sorry about all the mess. This is um, quite packed in here recently. But moving on with the uh, motor, that's all there is to talk about on the motor. This is a three turn motor, so it's a high speed one. You can get four, five, and six turns, which are the lower speed, higher torque. This is an 11 kV, 11 volt, 11 uh, RPM per volt, I think it is. That sounds about right. Um, where is it? 11.9, something like that. Yeah, let's get that out of the way. This is the cable that goes in between the controller and the motor. So as you can see, this is a very nice wire, labelled with clear heat shrink. I'm using an Ethernet on this end for the hall wires. Now this cable, this took a bloody long time to make, because each one of the individual ones are also screened in the braided cable sleeving. And then the entire thing has got braided sleeving over the top. So on the other end, we've got your XT150s and the um, six pin hall connector, which just plugs in there. And there's going there. So that's enough about this motor. Um, also, sorry for the terrible filming. This is, um, I need to get a different camera. I can't just keep filming on my iPhone. But anyway, um, this is the older hub motor, which I used for the first version of this bike. Sadly, I didn't get any video of. But um, this is quite rusted as it's been sitting outside. I really shouldn't have left it outside, but I did. So um, I might even reuse this rim as a test for the new one because it's a bloody strong rim. And it's got those 10 gauge spokes, which are roughly the right length, hopefully. But they're a bit bent, so I'm thinking of just getting a totally new rim, but 19 inch. And this has had modified phase wires as well, actually, which is. Um, those were a nightmare to get through there as well. It's like on the Muxus, the bigger hub motor up on the table. Those were a nightmare to get through because there's just not enough space. So I was thinking of downgrading to 12 gauge on that again, but I'm going to stay with the 10 gauge. And um, I'm surprised I got these ones through, that tiny shaft. There's three of these, and then there's another thing about the same size for the hall wires. And this is actually a Delta hub motor, so it's designed for more power now but I'm not sure how well that would have done because I never got to test it so there's a little test video about it but aside from that I never got to use it um, aside from that there's not really much else I can go on about in this video but there will be a lot more videos soon because I'm doing a not too in-depth build series but a fairly in-depth so I think the next video will be um, let's think, what's, what's arriving in the post next? S speed controller? Cycle analyst? Cycle analyst. I think I'll be doing a video about the cycle analyst, because that's what I'm using as a display. And I'm also using a, um, what's it called now? A different display, a Bafang TFT display, which is very nice. And um, I'm going to see if I can get the cycle analyst and this to work, because this is a... This is a 50 amp shunt, one milliohm. Those wires really don't look too thick, but I reckon that'll do. And, but that's for another video. So, I guess I'll probably, I'll probably have a video out either this coming week or the week after about the cycle analyst, the speed controller, and maybe even the Bafang TFT when that arrives. Um, but yeah, that's it for today.